Bring it up nice and tight. We haven't had a lot of things to put in so far this fall. The word for our team, the theme for our season, the, 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 especially for the fall, is just keep it simple. Just stay together, right? One play at a time, stay together, keep it fundamental. If you guys get an opportunity, take pride in the opportunity to set the tone for your team. If you can prove to your teammates how hard you'll work and what you'll do for your team, that will raise the level of play. That will elevate the rest of the team for you just selling out. Even if you don't make the play, you're committing to it, okay? You guys take pride in that opportunity. You look for those opportunities. When you find one, don't hesitate, you just go, okay? Let's go, bring it up. Let's go, boys. One ground ball at a time. All right, boys, together on three, together on three. One, two, three. Yeah. For the Cornell men's lacrosse team, the 2019 campaign began right where their previous season left off, against Maryland. Our responsibility on defense is to make sure our guy does not get a chance at that ball. If you check down, that ball will end up with the goalie. And while the expectations could not be higher, it is the work of the coming months that will ultimately determine their success. Champions aren't born, they're built. For the Cornell Big Red and the Florida Gators, expectations have never been higher, with only one goal in mind. Let's go! Game time! It's in the bag, you better believe it. We all play for one reason, show how dominating this season it's time. Take that dub with us and we leaving. You not with us in the streets and brave heart turn it up uh, for the season. We give it all. Get up when we fall. Yes. We stand for each other and answer the call. Whether bigger or small. No matter the reason we can't make a ball. No matter the side, we run through the wall. Calm demeanor like John Senior. Through the long season, got them all sleeping. By the fourth quarter, you can hear them hard breathing. They be doing long dreaming. But this field here is our region. No odds and evens, just our reasons. To send y'all packing to the off season. Ah. It's passion. It's the process. It's the season. 2019. Eleven hundred miles to the south, there's a spirit of optimism in Gainesville, where the Florida Gators women's team looks to win a national championship. I mean, this is a super strong senior class. Um, there's a lot of them, um, and they have a, I think, a really good grasp on, you know, what it takes to compete at the highest level and to achieve the goals that we want to achieve you know they've they've won conference championships but obviously that national championship has eluded us um, and I think every year they look back and you know woulda coulda shoulda and I think this class is poised more than probably um, any other to make that next jump. Coach Mandy O'Leary is in her 10th year at the helm for the Gators something she attributes to recruiting the right players and a laid-back coaching style. Well, we have so many big personalities. I don't think you have much of a choice. Um, and I think that started probably with the first group that I, uh, I recruited. Um, they came in, they had huge personalities. Um, and so I think that kind of just has followed through with class after class. I think, the, you know, you want to you wanna enjoy the kids that you're coaching. Um, and as much as, you know, you want to inspire them to greatness, you know, they need to inspire you. She hopes this strong senior class will lead them on a deep run come May. They're just such a, a unique group in a sense that they understand what it takes to be successful. And we have the underclassmen to fill in the gaps. And this is a complete team. So we'll see, but I'm, I'm really excited for, for what this season holds. Last year, Florida saw success in advance to the NCAA quarterfinals before having their season come to a close with an 11-8 loss to the eventual national champions, James Madison University. And the Dukes will head to Long Island. We've always been a team that has been talked about 
you know, Florida has the talent, they have everything, why do they keep, you know, falling short? It's a common goal that a lot of Division I teams have, and being a top four team, I think that's something that we've been on the cusp of getting for the past four years. I think the biggest thing for us is just believing in ourselves and showing that in all aspects of what we're doing, not just when it's game time. I think this is the year that we can win it all. It's not just the talent, it's the uh, personalities and the, the attitude and the positive thinking. So I think we got a good mix of amazing talent, but also just amazing people. Good job, babe. Although it's easy to identify first and second overall recruits, Sydney Pereka and Lindsey Brombeck for leadership on the field, what's truly unique to this Gator squad is the influence that all nine seniors have on this team. For the senior class, there's um, nine of us and we all said since freshman year how badly we want to win a national championship. Yeah, we have nine seniors, um, and that's a huge number for any program, but they're tremendous leaders in very different ways. Senior year, last go around, this is my last shot, and our goal is a national championship, and I personally do not plan on leaving this university until I get one. That's day one of practice, day two of season. Um, Woo! Awesome intensity, awesome effort, Stick work, right? Mm -hmm. Low rusty, we need to clean up on it. So. January in Ithaca means cold temperatures and getting ready to begin the lacrosse season in earnest. Everybody in this room knows that the most important thing about this uh, experience is that we love being together. This is the most important thing. Nothing compares to, to, to the fact that we get to do this together. If we weren't together, winning isn't the same. Being a part of something special is the most important thing. I'm telling you, it's the most significant. It's the one that's going to mean the most in your life forever. It's been said that a team takes its personality from its head coach. For the Big Red, entering their second year under the guidance of Peter Milliman, this definitely rings true. Our foundation, more than anything, is our commitment to the program, right? And what are we committing to? above all else. A lifestyle of excellence. So that, that encompasses everything we're doing, okay? It's pretty broad, but the way we state it is that we want you to understand that this is not, this is not a commitment to the work ethic. It's not a commitment to a, an idea of us or family or we over me or blah, blah, blah. This is a commitment to the lifestyle. Of everything we do, you have to do your very, very, very best, okay? Cornell Across is a different program. I think that for sure is, uh, is one of the first things I'll tell Everybody that, uh, that we talk to, it's not like everywhere else, and that's okay. Cornell Lacrosse has one of the most storied traditions in all of college lacrosse. You know, it's uh, a humbling place to play. It's a place that uh, is built on years and years and years of success. I think it's a lot less uh, flash and glamour and a little more substance here uh, than most places, and that's just the way we like it. He knew that our culture needed to change, and we needed to get back focused to you know, the traditions of Cornell Lacrosse, George Boyardi, and the players that have come before us, and the great teams that have come before us and the culture that they had, and that's kind of what Coach Millman instilled in our program was, was that new culture. I would say the first thing we needed to do was define who we wanted to be, and you know, we needed to be honest with ourselves. And uh, there are some talented players on this team. There's some great guys in the locker room, but nothing's gonna matter if, if we're not doing the right things everywhere. The first one is our hard hat work ethic. I would draw a hard hat, but you guys wouldn't, it would look like a turtle. So, um, our hard hat work ethic, okay? It's very, very important to us. We have a reference for how good of a, a, a teammate we've ever had. We have an, a, an idea of what type of work ethic we're talking about. It's our identity. Eyes up, eyes up, don't look at it. Nowhere is this work ethic more evident than on day one, the conditioning test. Hey, make sure we're touching lines, okay? It's just a foot touch. Make sure you're through the finish line. The annual test has become a time-honored tradition at Cornell, one that has been the same for decades. Here we go, first group, four trips, 40. Four trips, 40. It is conducted under the watchful eye of head strength coach, Ready. Tom Howley. Go! Five. Ten. Fifteen. 35, 6, 7, 8, 9, time. Twos are up, twos are up, ready. For Cornell, two numbers define the program. It's 
10 and 21. So 10 is uh, Eamon McEnany. He uh, was one of the all-time greats. He unfortunately passed away in 9-11. And then our other number is 21, so that's George Boyardi. He was a, uh, a captain here, and he passed away on the field after uh, blocking a shot. So, you know, he, in, a, in a sense, he gave his life for Cornell lacrosse. The type of person he was, the type of teammate he was, is who we are, you know, always chasing to be. There are very few of us in the program still uh, have ever met George, but we all have a different relationship with George. One of our pillars of our program is the uh, hard hat work ethic. So the hard hat is what symbolizes George every single day. And a junior on the team is chosen to carry the hard hat for the year. You bring it to every single uh, practice, game, lift, any team event, you bring the hard hat just so that George is there with us. A lot of teams in the world, those professional teams and stuff, talk about um, you know, having a hard hat work ethic and stuff like that. And you know, we are the hard hat. He's somebody who represents, you know, Working as hard as you possibly can with no expectation of reward or just caring so much about your teammates that you're willing to do anything for them and that's kind of what we try to try to embody every single day to honor his memory. And with you know the George piece of a tight end and the hard hat having a 21 on it takes on a special meeting for us. Wearing the hard hat this season is All-American Junior Jeff T arguably the most talented player in the country. It, it represents so much and I think it resembles our, our culture so well in our program. While he tallied 99 points a year ago, it is his quiet leadership and drive that most impresses his teammates. He's our leading scorer, he's our best player. He's also our hardest worker. We, we found in years past that when your hardest worker is also your best player, uh, it tends to bring everybody's level of play up on a daily basis. 55, six, seven, Go, 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 go! One, two... <laughs> hydrate! 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 From my vantage point, the most impressive thing was the older guys leading, okay? You guys were leading because you were in shape, because you are competitive, because you were working, and you're helping the younger guys, okay? I don't think collectively everybody's where we need to be right now, all right? But we're on our way, and that's where we want to be, right? We got to build it every single day. Come out here, do your best, compete, give everything to your team, and we'll get there. Right, but just believe in who we are and what we're doing. We're on the field tomorrow. Yeah. All right, I love you guys. Bring it in. Okay. Together on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, boys. Oh! Easy there. At Media Day, the personalities of the Florida Gators are on display. Take the hot pictures of me. Hot, hot, really hot. My dad's like, what's your celebration this year? I, I did this one, and he's like, all right, guns, cool, dude. Oh, here we go, Sass. Oh, there it is, money shot. Yeah. But no one in the room has a brighter personality than Florida's new recruit, 10-year-old Jada Turner. Jada is by far the strongest, the bravest, and most amazing person that I've ever come to know. In August of 2018, Jada was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia, an MDS. She has been receiving treatment at the University of Florida Hospital ever since, and her proximity has provided the Gators with a unique opportunity to adopt Jada onto their team. We love you, Jada, and we are here for you, and we're just so blessed that you are now becoming a part of our Gator family. When we found out that there was a child in need, Jada, this season, we were beyond excited to welcome somebody who needed us into our lives and our program. And I love you all. You are all my favorite. What she goes through and what she struggles with, I think that's going to be a huge kind of reality check for our team. While they're able to keep her spirits high, Jada also brings a new outlook to the Gators. We kind of take things for granted, and being able to adopt someone and seeing what they're going through and having someone like that on our team is not only awesome for her, but it's awesome for us to see what we are doing to help this little girl get through what she is going through. Play for something bigger than ourselves and know that there's something bigger out there than just playing lacrosse. For senior goalie Haley Hicklin, the experience of working with Jada has an even deeper meaning. So my mom was diagnosed with cancer when I was eight years old, so obviously pretty young. Um, and my grandmother actually had cancer at the same time and she passed away on the same day um, that my mom did in the summer before sixth grade, so I was 11. 
she was always the parent there at every every tournament, every practice, game, whatever it was. And even, I mean, when she was going through chemo, I have so many pictures of her on our sideline and just there every single game. And I always write mom on my hand or wrist. That is something huge for me. And we kind of use a dragonfly to symbolize my mom. And you know, there are some times at games when there are dragonflies all over the place, but there's one that comes over me and just kind of hangs out by me. And sometimes I see it during games and I always think, hi mom. And you know, I'm playing for my mom every day. Hey. Haley's understanding of the hospital and what Jada is going through is helpful when accompanying Jada to appointments. What are you looking at? You know, obviously I was around Jada's age um, when my mom was going through cancer and obviously that's different. I'm on the other side of things, but um, I grew up really quickly when I was younger and you know, I helped my mom a lot. I helped her with like when she came home and had feeding tubes after surgery and stuff like that. I've talked to some of my teammates that like might be a little hesitant around Jada doing certain things and I think that like I have that awareness. Though unfortunate circumstances brought them together, the bond between Haley and Jada has grown to become the closest on the team, a bright spot for both of them. I just remember my experience and being in the hospital and what it's like and how I can best be there for them. Hello. Yeah. Hello. How are you doing? Well, we went to Chipotle for dinner, second time. Steak, queso, which is brilliant. Don't know if you know what queso is. What's it costing? Eight bucks, I think. It's so cheap. Still better than everywhere in Australia, yeah. One of the most dynamic newcomers to the Big Red also happens to come from the furthest away. Face-off specialist, Tim Graham from Australia. The cold's the transition. That's what's been absolutely feral. Today in Melbourne, for example, we're at 110 degrees, minus 20 here with wind chill. So it's, it's been a rough transition in that regard, but I couldn't, couldn't be more at home with everything else. All the, all the blokes are just legends and I love it here. Growing up in Melbourne, college across in the US was an unlikely future, but always a dream. I've been following college across since I was a little tacker. I live about 100 metres from one of the very few lacrosse ovals in Melbourne. So they came to my local primary school, one of the junior coordinators, and he introduced it to us all and I thought, well, this is grouse, I might as well give it a go. Um, started, started playing socially, among all the other sports that I did. Stuck with it, started making teams and progressed from there. As his skills develop, Tim landed a spot on the Australian under-19 national roster, where he got his first taste of international competition. Teams at center, down at set, blow the whistle, let's play some lacrosse, we're underway. That was the first real exposure. I'd played in um, a couple of domestic tournaments across Australia, but nothing, nothing to that scope. Um, so that was just grouse, being on that world stage with, with an actual crowd um, that isn't just friends and family, is, uh, that's something special. Aussies in yellow, England in red. But within the face-off it was, all of a sudden I forgot who I was playing against and I was just playing, I was just taking face-offs and uh, on, upon reflection it was, geez, I can really stick my foot in the door here. But a clean face-off win. And that was probably where my whole dream of taking it to Div 1 became realistic. And in 2018, he earned a spot on the senior team competing at the World Championship in Israel, allowing him to face the names he had always read about. Tim Graham for Australia, number 18, and just turned 18 years of age, taking on Trevor Baptiste at the Exeter. Playing against people that you, you grow up hearing, oh, you're hearing their names and you idolise them and they're, they're gods, and then all of a sudden you're lining up, listening to the national anthem, and you look over, and there they are. By holding his own, the world and American college teams took notice. After the Iroquois game, actually, mum came up to me and she, she hugged me, congratulated me on the effort while I was still in tears because we just lost the bronze medal. And she said, you want some good news? Go on, nothing really. I'm pretty feel, pretty, feeling pretty down right now. I'm happy to hear something good. And she goes, you're going to Cornell. Um, what? Go, what? You're going to Cornell. Now on campus at Cornell, there's nowhere else Tim would want to be. Oh no, still yet to do it, still yet to do it. I was meant to do it yesterday, Arvo, and I was meant to do it this oh Arvo. But you know, I prioritise homework, so I, I did some study instead of washing. Okay. So what would you rather, good grades or clean clothes? 
his relationship with his mom continues to guide his life. I have never met my dad. It's just me and mum at home. So I have an exceptional relationship with mum. We, um, it's not so much here to here like most families. It's, we're really on the same plane with everything. She supports me, I support her. Um, it's, it's something else. I wouldn't be anywhere near here. I wouldn't be anywhere near anything successful if it wasn't for mum. The only, only washing that gets done is uniforms, and that's because I don't have to do it. <laughs> so, okay. the point being, I'm ahead of the eight ball by very little. Very, very little. I'm second last in this I, horrible race. I tried my best, and I completely failed. If that's where you fail, it's not terrible. That's not a big loss. <laughs> the support she's given me and the help she's given me throughout my journey, I couldn't be more grateful. What's behind there? What's behind there? There you go, what is it? There it is. For Coach Milliman, fatherhood has given him a new perspective on the game, courtesy of his nine-month-old daughter, Reese. You know what's crazy, man? I used to love being gone all the time, and then you, know, you get married and you start realizing that you're limited on time, and then your daughter's born and you realize that I gotta get home and, uh, and be with them. And while his burning desire for winning drives him, Coach Milliman sees every practice as an opportunity to shape his player's character. Hey, we're going to get into a good practice here today. It's one of the best ones I've ever written. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it is. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Hey. Um, let's just make sure we're bringing that mentality, we're bringing that tempo uh, right away. That's what we got to practice more than anything, that intensity that we can get through practice, and that's going to train us for a game day, okay? Hey, so when we talk about our approaches, right, we've got our short and our long. We need to go out under control. Good. Good, Ted. Good, 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 Dom, good. Give him a little shoulder, right? Give him a little shoulder fake. Good, good, yeah, good. Four to three, four to three offense. Gotta stop it, gotta stop. Shot! Defense, five push ups. In Gainesville, the seniors are taking time to relax before their team dinner celebrating their 2018 Big East Conference Championship. So this is called like the White House, because it's a White House. <laughs> and then um, Shannon's house around the corner is called Pop-Tart because it's bright blue and like purple. Every door is like open on our team, which is like super nice too. Yeah. And the freshmen like appreciate it so much. Um, yeah, we talk across a lot. It like sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it gets like a little much, but we mostly talk about like other teams. Well, imagine if you scored, it's like. <laughs> we talk about it because it's just literally half of our life. But then if we start getting like into it, into it, it's like, all right, we have this like rule. It's like no lax talk policy. So if we're like out to dinner or whatever, just hang out, we just say no lax talk policy and we're not allowed to talk about it. Coach Mandy reminds the girls that although success should be celebrated, there is real work to be done for the upcoming season. That effort needs to be in every single day because championships aren't going to come easy just because you are wearing a Florida Gator uniform. You got to work and you got to work hard and we got to work together. So hopefully we all put that together and we'll be here again next year celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> Expectations, culture, and resilience. For both the Cornell Big Red and Florida Gators, Come on, guys. it will be how they handle these elements that will ultimately determine if their championship dreams become a reality. We're doing a really, really good job of going hard and being enthusiastic and keeping the energy up. You get a chance to come out here and practice and compete, play as hard as you can. That's how we're going to get where we want to be. Together on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah.